Welcome to our Science and Technology Briefing program, where we dive into the latest happenings that are shaping our world. Today, we've got a mix of intriguing developments that are sure to pique your curiosity. Let's jump right in. First off, we're looking at how South Korean President Yoon suk yeol has sounded the alarm on the dangers AI-generated fake news poses to democracy. At the Summit for Democracy, he emphasized the need for global cooperation to harness AI and technology in promoting democratic values. Meanwhile, Elon Musk is stirring the pot by releasing the code for his anti-woke chatbot, Grok, into the wild. This move has sparked a debate on the benefits and risks of open-sourcing AI technology, with Musk betting on it to accelerate progress towards superhuman AI capabilities. In financial news, the Bank of Japan is teasing us with the possibility of ending negative interest rates, a move that could shake up the carry trade game and potentially benefit China. Over in the US, the Federal Reserve's upcoming rate decision has the markets on edge, as earlier predictions of significant rate cuts seem overly optimistic now. On a lighter note, the South by Southwest Festival has been buzzing with film premieres and controversies, including a boycott over its military sponsorships and Lindsay Lohan's return to the screen with Irish Wish. As we wrap up, it's clear that from the corridors of power in South Korea to the glitzy premieres at South by Southwest, technology and financial decisions are weaving an intricate tapestry that impacts us all. Whether it's AI shaping our democratic discourse or central banks navigating economic waters, there's never a dull moment. So, stay tuned for more detailed content on these stories. Please continue to watch for more in-depth coverage. Democracy under threat from AI fake news, South Korea's Yoon warns. South China Morning Post. South Korean President Yoon suk yeol has warned that fake news and disinformation based on AI and digital technology pose threats to democracy. Speaking at the opening of the Summit for Democracy, Yoon called for countries to share experiences and wisdom to ensure that AI and technology are used to promote democracy. The three-day summit, hosted by South Korea, is aimed at discussing ways to prevent democratic backsliding and the erosion of rights and freedoms. The main agenda of the summit will focus on digital threats to democracy and how technology can promote democracy and human rights. Elon Musk just shared the recipe to his anti-woke chatbot Grok to the world. Is that a bad thing? ABC. Elon Musk's AI company X.AI has open-sourced the code and waits for its anti-woke chatbot, Grok. The move is seen as part of Musk's campaign to embarrass chatbot rival OpenAI. While open sourcing can be controversial due to concerns about exploitation by malicious actors, proponents argue that it allows for further progress and the quickest path to building superhuman AI. The release of Grok's code allows for contributions from outsiders, potentially shaping its future development. The move follows Meta's selective release of its language model, Llama, which was widely distributed on platforms including 4chan. What happens when the BOJ kicks the football? Bloomberg. The Bank of Japan, BOJ, is considering ending negative interest rates and raising rates for the first time since 2007, according to Japanese financial news service Nikkei. The move could have implications for carry traders and China. Carry trading is a tactic that involves borrowing in a country with low interest rates and investing in a country where returns are higher. A carry trade that borrows in yen and invests in the Mexican peso has been highly lucrative in 2020, but a cut in Mexican rates would make the trade unprofitable. Meanwhile, China would stand to benefit from higher Japanese rates as a stronger yen would improve its economic outlook. The BOJ is set to make an announcement on rates this week. The US Federal Reserve, a Fed, is also set to make an announcement on rates this week. The bond market is currently indicating that it was mistaken in expecting significant easing from the Fed this year. In January, the market expected the Fed to cut rates at least six times, but it now expects only three rate cuts. The change in sentiment is partly due to the fact that inflation and unemployment are not worsening, but are also not improving rapidly. The market is also concerned about secondary data issues such as rising wage costs and rising commodity prices. The market may therefore overreact to the nuanced course of action laid out by Fed Chair Jerome Powell. ICYMI, the hottest South by Southwest films, Lindsay's silly new flick and protesters interrupt Jeremy Strong. ABC. The South by Southwest, South by Southwest, festival in Austin, Texas, has premiered several films that are generating buzz. Dev Patel's directorial debut, an action thriller, received a standing ovation and was picked up by Jordan Peele's Monkey Paw Productions for theatrical release. The Fall Guy, starring Ryan Gosling and directed by former stuntman David Leach, was filmed in Sydney and will be released in cinemas on April 24. Australian horror film The Spine of Night, written and directed by Colin and Cameron Cairns, will be released on April 11. Alex Garland's Civil War, set in a future where some U.S. states have seceded from the rest of the country, will also be released on April 11. 
Over 80 speakers and performers boycotted South by Southwest in protest against its sponsorship by the U.S. Army and weapons companies. Texas Governor Greg Abbott told the boycotting artists on Twitter, if you don't like it, don't come here. South by Southwest responded by defending its sponsors and their contribution to the festival. Lindsay Lohan has returned to the screen with Irish Wish, a romantic comedy set in Ireland, as part of her two-film deal with Netflix. The film has divided opinion but audiences seem happy to see Lohan back on screen. The Department of Homeland Security is embracing AI. New York Times. The U.S. Department of Homeland Security, DHS, is set to become the first federal agency to adopt generative AI models across its divisions. The DHS plans to launch pilot programs in partnership with OpenAI, Anthropic, and Meta, using chatbots and other tools to combat drug and human trafficking, train immigration officials, and enhance emergency management. The move reflects the agency's recognition of the potential benefits and risks of AI technology. However, the use of generative AI has faced criticism due to its potential for unreliability and discrimination. Amid fierce competition in China's EV market, Xpeng to launch cheaper brand. CNN. Chinese electric vehicle, EV, maker Xpeng plans to launch a cheaper brand of EVs, aiming to enter a highly competitive segment in the industry. The new brand will offer models priced between 100,000 Chinese yuan, $14,000, and 150,000 Chinese yuan, $21,000, compared to the 200,000 Chinese yuan to 300,000 Chinese yuan range that premium EV makers typically offer. Xping said it will introduce models under the new brand, each with different levels of intelligent driving capabilities. The company aims to create the first AI-assisted driving car for young people. Sales of battery-powered EVs in China slowed to 18.2% in the first two months of 2020, down from 20.8% in 2019. TSMC bulls ignore Buffett's warning for bet on coming AI age. Bloomberg. Foreign investors are showing renewed interest in Taiwan semiconductor manufacturing company, TSMC, despite concerns over geopolitical tensions. The company's stock has experienced a record rally, with foreign investors boosting ownership to a two-year high. TSMC claims that artificial intelligence, AI, will be its biggest growth driver this year, as it has a dominant market share in manufacturing advanced semiconductors used for AI. While concerns have been raised about TSMC's concentration of chipmaking in Taiwan and its vulnerability to military escalations with China, the company is making progress in diversifying its operations with plans for new fabrication plants in Japan, the US, and Germany. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6Do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6Do Brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6Do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6Do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6dobrief.com. Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6Do Brief via email.